In this code 0 to 20, we're going to be looking at how you can change the visual appearance of VS Code. This includes changing the editor colors and the user interface colors, as well as adjusting the font and more advanced customization options as well. This is only going to cover how you change the appearance of things, not how they actually function. But unlike many programs, VS Code really offers a lot of customization options, so you can really tweak its appearance. There's far more than just a basic light and dark option. For example, you can install thousands of themes that are available and then really go in and fully customize those themes so you get the perfect setup. Using the approach in this video, you'll be able to go from something that's looking like this to something that's looking more like this. This video will cover topics that might be of interest to people who are both just beginning with VS Code and wanna make basic customizations, as well as more advanced users who really wanna get in and tweak the appearance of the editor to exactly fit their needs. So there's gonna be a little bit of everything. And even if you're an advanced user, keep watching because you might learn a little something along the way as well. So let's take a look. When you first open VS Code, one of the first things you might wanna adjust is the zoom level. So this is adjusting the size of the entire editor, all the user interface elements, as well as the size of the code itself. We can change the zoom level just by using the command palette or by keyboard shortcuts. So let's take a look at how you change this using the command palette first. So I'm gonna open the command palette by pressing Control Shift P on Windows and Linux or Command Shift P on Mac. And then I'm gonna type zoom. And the zoom commands that I want here are the view, zoom in, and view, zoom out commands. So let's go down to those. And in this case, the font is a little bit large, so let's zoom out a little bit. And you'll see that when I selected that command, VS Code has actually zoomed out the entire user interface. So not only did the editor text get smaller, so we can see more of our code on screen here, but also all the buttons in the entire user interface also zoomed out. Now, of course, we can also zoom back in if we wanted this to become larger. But again, here, we're just zooming the entire user interface. Later on, we'll actually cover how you can increase the size of just the editor font here. But for now, we're just gonna adjust the entire user interface size. Now I can also use key bindings to adjust these. So I can press control plus and minus or command plus and minus on Mac to adjust these as well. So I can really zoom out if I wanna get a whole lot on the screen and I can handle all this little tiny text here or I can zoom back in and maybe for presentations or something like that, it'd be nice to have a larger font size where people can really be able to see this from a distance. So let's just go back to a more reasonable zoom level here and there's that. So that's the zoom levels in VS Code. Now, after finding the right zoom level, the next thing you might want to adjust about VS Code is its color theme. Color themes not only control the colors within the editor for languages. So for example, we see that the static keyword here is blue. This if keyword is a kind of a purpley color here. Um, that's controlled by the color theme, but the color theme is also controlling all the colors of the VS Code user interface here. So we have by default, this kind of dark theme and the editor background is this kind of dark uh, black color. And then the status bar here is this light blue color. And that's all being controlled by the color theme. So VS Code ships with some built-in color themes that you can switch between, but it, there's also a lot of color themes available in the marketplace that you can install. Let's take a look at how you'd adjust the color theme and take a look at some of the built-in ones and then how you'd go and install additional color themes. A little bit later on, we'll also take a look at how you can personalize and really customize elements of these color themes if you want to, but that's more of an advanced thing. So let's look at color themes ba basics for now. So if I wanna change color themes, all I'm gonna do is again, open the command palette using Control Shift P or Command Shift P on Mac. And I'm gonna just open that and type in color theme. And now you can see that VS Code is listing out all the color themes. I'm currently on this dark plus color theme here. And you can see that if I scroll through the list, VS Code has grouped the color themes by light themes, dark themes, and then down here, there are high contrast themes as well. And high contrast is just increasing the contrast of everything. So it might be helpful if you have um, low vision or some other vision problems where you want a little bit more contrasty user interface. But you can see that VS Code includes some, uh, maybe around 10 or so color themes out of the box. And let's just start scrolling through these to really sh see what can actually be customized by these color themes. So I'm just gonna use the arrow keys. And as you see, as I go through these, the entire look of VS Code can change. So these are all dark themes again. And the red one can pretty drastically makes everything red there. But as I go through, you can see that not only is the color of the code here changing, but the color of the entire user interface is also being adjusted by these color themes. Now, if I go to one, let's just go to Monokai, for example. If I wanna to switch to this color theme, all I have to do is either click on it in this list here or press enter. And once I do that, then I've switched to that color theme. Now, if I go and I open the color theme picker again, and I'm scrolling through and I decide I don't wanna switch color themes, all I have to do is press escape and I'll go out of that list and revert to my current color theme. 
But looking at the code, we're seeing that the code is looking very different. And one other thing about color themes is that in this case, they're also adding underlines and italics to the code. So color themes can also customize some aspects of how the code itself is being displayed. That's in addition to, of course, changing the entire appearance of the VS Code user interface. Now let's take a look at some of the, just opening the command palette again, some of the light themes as well. So if I go up here to the light themes, you can see that VS Code also has these light themes that add a light background, and I can go through these. They have kind of different looks to them, and I can compare these and see if there are any that I like there. So I can also go to these light themes. And then finally, there's that also the high contrast theme I mentioned, where it gets rid of a lot of the in-between colors. So there's no gray backgrounds or in-between backgrounds. It's just mostly black and white with these bright high contrast colors like oranges and blues that are going on. So that's the high contrast theme. Now, color themes can also be set in the settings. So one way to um, change them is using that command in the command palette, but you can also go to the setting um, and set the color theme there. All that command is really doing is actually updating the setting. So let's take a look at using the setting to update the color theme. So I'm just gonna open my settings by pressing control comma or command comma on Mac. And when I open these settings, I just wanna type in color theme and I wanna find the workbench color theme setting here. And you can see that this setting has been modified. So we are on the Monokai theme here. And if I go to it, I actually get a list of all the same color themes we had before. It's not displayed quite as nicely, but I can go through and change to any of the other color themes. So let's go to the default dark plus, which is the one we had before. And as soon as I save this file, VS Code will update and the color theme is back to dark plus now. So that is the built-in color themes for VS Code. But of course, there are also extensions that provide a ton of other color themes. And if we want to install one of those, we can um, go into the extension marketplace and try out a few different ones. So let's do that. I'm going to open up the command palette again. And a quick way to find color themes is to go to the, again, go to this preferences color theme option. And I'm going to go down here to this last option that says install additional color themes. And I'm going to click on that one. And it will do a special search in the VS Code extension view here, which is just, if, if I want to get to that view, I can just click over on this little extensions thing. And now it's searching for all the available color themes. I can also trigger a search in here if I just get rid of the search term, just by typing the at symbol and then at category. And then let's go to at category themes. So VS Code will provide IntelliSense and help me do this search as well. We can see that there are a ton of different color themes available all different types of ones. And if I wanted to search for something more specific, so let's say I wanted to find something that matches GitHub, for example, I can just type in a search phrase after that at category themes, and this will show me all themes that have been tagged with GitHub. Let's just take a look at some of the popular ones. And these two are actually icon themes. So we'll take a look at those a little bit later, but they let you change the file icons. So the ones we want are probably the normal color themes. So One Dark Pro, for example, is a popular one. Let's click on its page. And we can see here, it's got a preview of what this is going to look like. Looks pretty good. So let's go and just install this. And once I install this theme, now VS Code is prompting me and asking, do I want to switch to this new theme? So here's our current theme and here's the new theme. If I want to switch to this new one, all I have to do is press enter. And now we are using the new OneDark Pro theme here in our editor. So pretty simple. Now, there are also some color themes that actually install multiple different color themes or some extensions that install multiple different color themes. The material theme is a good example of this. So here we have the material theme. You can scroll through, got a bunch of cool stuff in here. And I'm just going to install this. And when I do this, we see that a bunch of different color themes are now being listed. So here's our current theme. And then all these themes were just installed by this one extension. And I can go through and kind of preview each of these and find one that I like. So the, let's go to this darker one, kind of a lower contrast one. Uh, and we can see our code has now been updated for that color theme. So you can go to the marketplace, install all these color themes, and find one that really works well for you. As I said a little bit later on, we'll actually uh, cover how you can customize these individual color themes to really fit your needs. But for now, let's just go back to the default dark plus and go back to our standard view and move on to the next way you can customize VS Code. File icon themes let you change the icons that are used for files in VS Code. So you'll notice in this tab here, I have a TypeScript file open, and there's this little TS. That is a file icon. And then over here in the Explorer, there's also this little TS, and that is also a file icon. Now, if I scroll down to a section of the Explorer where there's a bunch of different files, you can actually see this more obviously. 
So we have all these like a YAML file and we have these config files, these JSON files. Each of those are getting a special file icon. And these help us identify more quickly the various types of files. So if I'm looking for the ESLint RC, for example, here, I don't have to scan this entire list. I can just see, oh, this kind of purple colored thing and then click on that very easily. And again, these are also shown in the editor tabs here. Now, these are also themable by extensions and VS Code ships with a few built-in ones as well. So let's go take a look at how you change that. So similar to a color theme, we're gonna open up the command palette, control shift P or command shift P on Mac. And I'm going to go to file icon themes here. And when I do this, you'll see that there's a list of file icon themes. Now I'm seeing more than you would normally have here because I actually installed an extension that provided some additional ones. That material extension that I installed provided some additional file icon themes that are not normally available. And you can see all of those are listed here. So the ones that are normally listed by VS Code and that VS Code ships with are the SETI theme, the minimal theme, and none. And let's just take a look at the three built-in ones that VS Code has. So SETI, as we saw, has those colorful icons and everything. Minimal though, as we scroll to that, you'll see that now all those colorful icons have been replaced by just a generic file icon. And then the folders have a generic folder icon. And as I expand the folder, the icon changes. So this is a, it's definitely not as colorful, but you can tell the folders apart from the files using this theme. So that is the minimal. And then let's go back to this and go to none. So I'm just gonna click on none. And for none, you can see that not only has the file icon gone away in the Explorer, so all these files no longer have an icon, but it's also gone away in the editor tab up here. Now I can still tell that something is a folder over in the Explorer because it has this little chevron here, so I can expand and collapse it. But other than that, you, to tell that something is a JSON file, for example, I would just have to look at the file extension here. So that is minimal. Now, as I said, of course, you can also install um, the file icon themes through extensions, as we saw with the material icon theme. And if I wanted a icon theme, I'm just gonna go to the extensions view and type in icon theme. And I'm gonna go and find, well, this one looks interesting. So I'm gonna go here and install this. And now it's prompting me if I wanna actually switch to this file icon theme. I'm gonna say, yes, let's go switch to that. And as we go back here, now we see the file icons have completely changed. So we have a very different theme here. Again, the file icon theme is also backed by a setting. So all that command really does when you're running in the command palette, file icon theme is actually update a setting value. Let's go open the settings here and I'm gonna search for icon theme. And the one I want here is workbench icon theme. And you can see I have a list of all the available workbench icon themes. If I wanna reset this, I can just go to VS SETI and I'm back to my original file icon theme. So again, file icon themes, they're just a setting, but there's that nice command in the command palette we can use to actually change them and get some visual feedback while previewing them. So after customizing the colors of the editor, the next thing we might wanna go change is the font used within VS Code. So this is the font used within the code editor here. And VS Code lets us use pretty much any font that we want to within the um, editor here. And then it also gives us some ways to control various aspects of this font as well. So first off, let's just change the font that is being used here. And I'm gonna open up the settings again for this. So I'm gonna use control comma or command comma on Mac and open up the settings. And I'm just gonna just move this settings view just by dragging. So it is now next to our code so we can see the effect of the changes we are making on the code itself. Now I'm gonna type in font and we're gonna find the font settings that we want. So the first one we want is editor font family. And this defines the font that is being used within the editor. You can see here, here's a list of the fonts. And this is sort of like what you would put in a CSS selector um, or a CSS font family rule. So behind the scenes, VS Code is pretty much using just that. And we can specify things like the base font and then the fallback values that are being used here. Let's go and edit this. And I'm just gonna delete the default value Let's say I wanted to use courier instead. I'm just gonna type that in and save. And now I've updated VS Code to use a different monospace font that I know is installed on my system here. So now, of course, I can also type in pretty much any font I want. I could do something like times if I really wanted to. So I have a non-monospace font. You could even do something like Comic Sans MS. And now I have all of my code in Comic Sans or even Impact, which probably not the best for programming, but you can do all sorts of things here. 
And um, if I ever want to go back and get back to my original font, all I have to do is go to this little gear and then see, say, reset setting. Now VS Code has gone back to its original font. Now, a lot of fonts that you'll, you'll find online, such as Source Code Pro or Fura Code or Cascadia Code, for example, will have install instructions. So for those type of fonts, you actually need to both install the font on your system so that the system can find it. And then you'd want to put the font name in um, the font family field here. So for ones like that have a space in them, like Cascadia Code, for example, I already have it installed in my system. And I'm going to type Cascadia Code and then save. And now VS Code is picking that up. The font pages for many of these will have install instructions on what you need to do. And they'll describe how you would install these fonts on Windows, Linux, or Mac. And then you would just need to know the identifier to use as the font family. If one is not listed, it would be the same identifier that you would use in a CSS rule to use that font. So now I've updated my editor to use Cascadia Code. And let's stick with this Cascadia Code font here because it actually has a, a few other cool features that we'll demonstrate in a bit. So some of the other font settings that we might want to adjust are, just scrolling down here, the editor font size, for example. Now, before we were demonstrating how you could zoom in and out the entire editor and the entire user interface, but let's say we just wanted to make the font size different. We want to maybe make it a little bit smaller so we can see more on the screen at a time. I can use the editor font size for that. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take this down to, let's do it 10 here for editor font size. And now I can see a little bit more on my screen. I can get really crazy if I wanted to and say, let's do six for the font size and have really tiny font. And if you have great vision, that might be useful. Or if I'm doing a presentation, I'm going to go up to 24 here. And now I have really super huge font. And you can see that the rest of the VS Code user interface, it's all the same size. I've only adjusted the editor font size here. And again, if I ever want to go back to the default value, all I have to do is click on this little gear and say, reset setting. And I'm going back to the default now. Now, the other settings here that you might want to look at are the font weight. So I can actually adjust the weight of the font. I can make it bolder or lighter. Not all fonts ship with multiple weights, so you need to make sure that you have a font that actually supports all these weights. But the Cascadia Code font, for example, does have a bold variant. You can see that when I enabled that, things became a little bit brighter looking, a little bit bolder. And I can go back to normal, just kind of see the difference there. So some fonts will also ship with a whole range of font weights here that you can use, but not every font supports those. And then finally, let's just look at this line height setting. So line height lets you control the spacing between the lines in the editor. And for example, here we have a fairly good amount of spacing so that the text is not too cramped and a value of zero for the line height makes VS Code automatically calculate that. If I want to specifically have a specific line height though, I can actually go in here and say something like, so our font size right now is, I think, um, 12. So let's go and set this to 14 and make it a little bit smaller. So we've um, reduced the line height here, and you can see that things, the line height is only 12 pixels now. Things are a little bit more cramped as I scroll through this file. If I go and I increase this line height, let's go like really crazy. Let's go up to 30. You can see I have a whole lot of spacing between each of my lines here. And Everything has been changed there. I'll just go and reset this again and go back to the standard line height. So the editor line height, editor font weight, and the editor font size settings also give you further control over the fonts that are, you're using in VS Code. Now, one final setting is a little bit harder to explain. Um, it is the editor font ligature setting, but this one's pretty cool. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to actually go, let's increase this font size a little bit. Let's go to 16 and take a look at this little arrow function here. So in JavaScript, we have uh, arrow functions where we're using an equal sign and then a greater than sign. And this is actually two characters. So you type equal and then greater than to, to specify that. What font ligatures let you do is actually have the editor render these two characters or more than two characters, for example, as a single glyph. So it's using a single symbol that stands in the place of these two characters. And this can improve the legibility of code and just make it look a little bit nicer. So sort of hard to explain and not all fonts support this. So you need to make sure that your font does support this, but let's take a look at what happens in this JavaScript file when I enable font ligatures. Now this is an advanced setting. So I actually have to edit this in the JSON file itself. So I'm gonna to go to the edit in settings JSON and I'm gonna to go to my editor 
font ligature setting and just say true as the value. Save that file. And once I enable the font ligatures, you can see that what has happened is that this arrow is now being rendered as a single, single symbol here. So there was no longer any gap in between, and it has this cool looking arrow symbol that's being used instead. Now, the important thing about font ligatures is that the, the content on the disk, the text on the disk is not changed in any way. All font ligatures do is change how the file is displayed in the editor. So if I actually looked at the file on the disk, I'd still have an equal sign and then a greater than sign. And I can prove this by actually moving my cursor and I'm gonna start at the left side of this. And if I move one over, you can see that it's actually inside of this arrow. And if I then make a space, I can split that glyph apart. And now I just have the equal sign and then the um, greater than sign th again. But as soon as I put them next to each other, I again have that font ligature. So you get some kind of cool font ligatures in here as well. So for example, we have the greater than or equal than sign here. And if I split this one apart, you can see that it was just a greater than and then equal. But as soon as I put them back together, I get that greater than or equal than sign. So you get these font ligatures that, depending on your preference, the code can be more readable that way. And again, they do not affect anything about how the code is stored on disk. They just affect how it's displayed. Various fonts may offer various types of ligatures. So some have specialized ligatures for Haskell, for example. But a lot of the common ones, such as the yeah, Fira code, Source Code Pro, or Cascadia code will have font ligatures for common ones like the greater than or equal than sign and for arrow functions that you find in JavaScript. So just make sure your font supports them and then try enabling font ligatures if that's something you're into. I'm just going to delete uh, the settings here. So we go back to the standard VS Code settings again. And that's been a quick look at fonts. Now, as we just saw using color themes and fonts, we can completely change the appearance of VS Code. We can switch to a lighter theme. We can switch to a more colorful one. We can use whatever font we want. We can really customize our editing experience using extensions. And none of it was very hard. We just had to install a few extensions, use a few commands and settings if we wanted to. But it's pretty easy to dramatically change the appearance of VS Code to match whatever we're after. However, if you're an advanced user and you're really wanting to tweak specific aspects of a, a theme, say I wanted to change just the color of this bar over here, the activity bar, or if I wanted to change just the color of the if statements in uh, TypeScript files, for example, that's also possible using VS Code settings. And I'm going to show you how to do that in these more advanced settings now. The first advanced setting that we're going to take a look at is the Workbench Color Customization setting. So I'm just going to type in Workbench color. And we're going to go to this workbench color customization setting. And this is um, going to let us override the colors of specific user interface elements in VS Code. Again, this is a advanced um, setting. So I have to edit in the settings JSON file. And I'm just going to go into that now and expand here. So we have this workbench color customization setting. And again, this is now if I trigger IntelliSense in here, VS Code is suggesting a bunch of themes. I'm just going to skip past those for now and go down to the entries that we're interested in, which are the ones here. So this is a list of all the color identifiers in VS Code. And you'll see things like editor, line highlight background, things like editor group header, and all these other ones. And if I actually go to one of these, such as activity bar, if I trigger in the IntelliSense, it'll tell me a little bit more about um, each of these. So I have some information about what is being changed here. What each of these is actually doing is, in the VS Code user interface, um, the various elements, such as the activity bar, are getting their color from the keys here. So this key is defining the background of the activity bar. The various themes for VS Code, such as the dark plus theme that I'm currently in, set a value for this. So it's setting it to this kind of dark gray color. What I can then do with this setting, though, is override that value. And I can say, oh, when you're coloring in the activity bar, instead of using that dark gray color from my current theme, actually go and use the color that I'm going to provide. So let's use activity bar background as an example. And I'm just going to accept the default value here. And you can see that VS Code will fill in this, this color, which is a nice red color. If I hover over it, I get the color picker. And I want to change this to kind of a dark, dark bluish color instead. So kind of a dark purplish blue. And as soon as I save this file, you'll see that the activity bar over here has now changed color. So we've overridden the colors from the themes so that VS Code is now using that value that we provided instead. And you can use this to change the color of pretty much everything in the VS Code user interface. If we go back to this list here, for example, you can see that there are quite a few options, like uh, very a lot, a lot of options going on here. 
and we have control over pretty much every color within the VS Code user interface. These colors are also documented in the VS Code API if you're wanting to learn a little bit more about them. But if we wanted to do something like the editor background, for example, we can go in and let's just change this to kind of a little bit of a lighter gray instead. We can save and change the complete editor background here. Maybe that's too light, so we can just clear that out. So you can see that I can go in and change all the colors in the VS Code user interface using this. It's just kind of a matter of finding the right key and the right color that you actually want to use here. Now, when you set something at the top level like this, so I set the activity bar background here, what I've done is actually set this for all color themes. So if I go to a different color theme now, let's just go to like the Monokai theme, you'll see that I am still using this activity bar setting that I um, set here. So it's still using that purple color. And usually that's desirable, but not always. So if I want to override a, let's say I like everything about the Monokai theme, but I just don't like the color of the activity bar. I wish it stood out more. I can override that color just for the Monokai theme using this color customization setting as well. So I'm going to go back into the setting and I'm going to trigger IntelliSense. And now you see this list of all these um, theme names in brackets. And if I accept one of these, I can then override specific things just for one theme. So let's go in here and I'm going to do that activity bar background again. And I'm going to make it a real uh, black color here. And when I save, you can see that the theme, uh, the bar here is now this black color. But what happens when I now switch color themes is that it will use the default color in those other themes. So I can override specific theme values as well using this workbench color customization setting. So this is a super powerful setting. Now, if you're setting like a whole lot of these color settings, and if you're really customizing things pretty extensively, you may want to consider bundling that all up into your own color theme instead. Um, so this is really intended to be used for maybe a handful of different settings. If you're filling out the entire list of things, you're probably better off creating a new theme extension that you could share with other people. Um, but this is super powerful and you can do some really cool things. So one thing I like, for example, is the editor line highlight border, which if you want the current line you're on to stand out more, you can set this editor line highlight border. I'll just use the default red color here. And now you can see as I move through the file, I get this super bright line highlight. So I can see really easily just at a glance, oh, here's my current line. But again, you can really customize pretty much everything about the VS Code user interface using this workbench color customization setting. There's an equivalent setting for customizing how languages appear in VS Code called editor token color customizations. And this is what you can use to change the color of individual keywords, of all comments in VS Code, or things like that. Uh, so let's take a look at that setting now. And I'm just going to stay in my advanced editor and type in the setting name here. So I'm going to say editor token color customizations and fill in this setting. So again, editor token color customizations, and it's going to be an object value. Now, if we trigger IntelliSense in this using control space, again, we'll see a list of the themes here. Let's skip over there and look at the actual values that we can fill in. So the ones that we're interested in are things like comments, functions, keywords, and all of these. So many of these are kind of self-explanatory. Comments, for example, lets us set the styling for comments. Functions lets us do the same for functions, keywords, keywords, and, and so on. The only one that's a little bit more complex is this TextMate rules one, and we'll talk about that later. But for now, let's take a look at how comments works, for example. So I'm going to select comments, and here I'm again presented with a color picker. And let's say I want all comments to be this really bright, bright yellow color instead. I'm just going to change that, save the file, and if I go find a comment, now you can see that it's this bright yellow color in the editor. And again, this is also, when I set something at the top level of this editor token color customization setting, this overrides the color for all themes. So as I go through other themes here, like dark plus, you'll see that my color carries over. And both types of comments are also being overridden. So we have the block comments here, as well as the line comments that are being overridden with this special color. So we can do the same for keywords if we wanted to. If I can just type here, keywords. Now I've made all the keywords, this yellow color, same for variables. So VS Code just has some built-in things that it can easily colorize using that. Again, if I wanted to colorize the, let's say I wanted to colorize comments in just one theme, for example, I can use these bracket settings and say something like Monokai, and I'm gonna move this variables setting into Monokai. 
And now you'll see that in my default dark plus theme, variables are normal colored. But as soon as I switch over to the Monokai theme, then they all get this nice bright yellow color instead. So I can override things in a theme level as well. So that's the basic use of the editor token color customization setting. But there's a more advanced use using the uh, TextMate rules field. So before we were looking and we have things like comments, but then there's this special one called TextMate rules. And this one is for really advanced use cases. And what it lets you do is actually specify a TextMate rule that you can then um, give colors and styles to. What this would allow you to do is say something like, I want to theme just the return keyword, for example, in TypeScript files. And I could just theme that one keyword and not theme all of the keywords across all languages. So you can get really advanced. You can really scope very specific things using TextMate rules, but they are more advanced to use. And if you're writing a lot of them, you're probably better off eventually like extracting those off into your own theme extension so that you can maintain that and share that with other people. But let's take a look at using a basic TextMate rule. So I'm going to say TextMate rule, and this is an array of rules that we're going to specify here. I'm going to trigger IntelliSense and just accept the first suggestion. This is a snippet that will help me fill this out. And it's providing a bit of help here. And it's going to say, so each rule here consists of a TextMate scope, which is basically identifying what you want to target. So that's saying, um, here we're going to target keyword operator scope, and I'll explain how you get that in a moment. And then it's specifying the settings for that scope. If I actually save this, you'll see that a bunch of operators in the file or things that uh, the grammar is tagged as operators, such as the equal sign here, the or operator here, have now been converted to this red color. Now, where is this scope actually coming from? And if I'm trying to find something, where would I go and get the scope? Um, we can actually look in the file itself to determine this. So I'm going to go into my file and I'm going to place my cursor over this return statement. And I'm going to use the command palette and say developer inspect editor tokens and scopes setting. And I'm going to go and trigger this command. Now, what this is letting me do here is actually see all of the TextMate scopes that are being applied at the current location in the file. So as I go through the file, you can see that this is being updated. It is displaying the token name and then all of the information about it, the type of language that we're in, and then all of the scopes. So let's actually go and change the color of just arrow functions in TypeScript files. So I put my cursor on this arrow here, and we can see a list of TextMate scopes from the most generic to the most specific. And we can see that arrow functions have this unique scope called storage type function arrow TS. And that the details of this actually don't matter very much. We just want the scope name itself. Now I'm going to go over into my TextMate rules, paste that in without the new line there, of course. And as soon as I do this and I save it, you can see that now all of the arrow functions or all of the arrow symbols in my file have been updated so they are in this red color. So we've, we've scoped down our, our selector so that it is just targeting these arrow functions. And you can write more advanced scopes as well, depending on your use case. But again, just use that developer inspect editor token and scope setting to find the scope you're after, and then paste it over into the scope here if you're trying to scope, uh, target something specific. Now, these settings also give us more control than we would normally have. I'm just going to go let's target control flow keywords here. OK, so now I have the control flow keywords being targeted. And I'm going to change the color here to be kind of a purpley violet color. Now it's a little dark. And let's actually go into these settings here because I have a little bit more control than I do in some of these other settings. So I'm going to go into here and specify the font style. And now I can fill in all of these other settings as well. So I can say, well, I really want these keywords to be bold, for example. And when I save this, you'll see that now VS Code is rendering these bold. Or I can say, I want these to be uh, italic. So these are all the same settings that the themes themselves, such as the Monokai theme, we're using to add underlines, italics, and change the color of various things. But you can actually use VS Code settings to control that as well and override what those themes are doing. So you can get super complex. You can really go crazy with these TextMate scopes. But again, if you're doing anything too crazy, you probably want to extract that out into its own theme extension instead, just because it will be more maintainable. And then other people can enjoy the cool theme that you're building as well. 
So that's been a quick look at how you can customize the appearance of the VS Code editor and really um, make it best for your workflow. As we've seen, you can change a whole lot about how VS Code appears without changing any of the functionality. All we did was tweak the appearance of things, but you can have quite a different editing experience by changing things like the color theme, the font, um, and you can really make sure that it is working best for whatever you're used to or whatever you feel most comfortable with. As some next steps, one thing you might want to look into if you're on the advanced side of things is actually authoring a color theme so you can share all this cool stuff uh, with the world. If you're just getting started with VS Code, try browsing through some of the available color themes, find ones you like, find ones that work with whatever language you're, you like, and see what other people are using as well. Let me know if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, and if you come up with a really cool way of customizing VS Code, be sure to share it so that other people can also learn and see how you're working. So this has been a look at how you can change the appearance of VS Code. Thanks for watching.